You're listening to episode 12 of the Ento Podcast. Looking to stay up to date on all things entomorphology? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Ento Podcast with your host, Ross Bell. Before we get started with today's episode, just like to thank all the people down at Surbiton Food Festival and all the guys who turned up uh, over the last weekend to pop by the stall and see us. Thanks Connor and Paul and Natalia and, and thanks to Eleanor Blunstam at the Maple Village WI who gave me the opportunity to talk about insects on Sunday. We had a good turnout which was which was really nice to see so so many people interested in how to use cricket powder in their diets and sort of how they can able how they're able to just sort of start eating insects. And the next bit of housekeeping, or the last bit of housekeeping, for anyone in London on the 28th of May, uh, if you check out the Eat Grub website, you can sign up for their Eat Grub pop-up restaurant, which they're retur- which is returning again this year. So on Sunday the 28th of May, Eat Grub are teaming up with their chef Seb Holmes to bring you a taste of delicious Thai-inspired insect dishes. So this is in uh, San Daniel in Highbury. And it's a five course insect tasting menu for it's thirty three pounds that will that sort of infuse with some of the best Thai street street few street food flavors. You'll also get a a bottle of Four Pures craft beer or a glass of wine to go with it. And I'll put links to their website so you can book. First today comes by Marcia K, um, and it's in the Toronto Star. It's called Eat the Beetles, explores the future of grub. As someone who grows monarch butterflies, loads earwigs, respects bees and is allergic to wasp stings, I have conflicted relationship with insects. So do most of us. But listen up foodies, insects are a potentially major food source, writes David Wal- Waldner Towers in Eat the Beetles. David is delighted insects are hopping up on menus globally. He recounts his personal tasting of palm weevil in Paris. They taste like figs. Lime fried crickets in Laos, caramel mealworm and chocolate covered locusts in London. And for anyone who's screamish, he asks, is a plate of insects any weirder than a plate of chicken wings? But Eat the Beetles isn't a cookbook. Walter Tower is a Kitchener, Ontario veterinarian and epidemiologist who studies ecosystem approaches to health and disease, focuses on a bigger picture. Our planet's once in a millennium chance to create a well-managed, sustainable, insect-based food system and not screw it up as we've done with our resource-grabbing beef industry or disease-plagued chicken production. The author, who is the founding president of Veterinarians Without Borders, also looks at how to humanely harvest insects. Walter Towers punctuates this serious subject with his quirky humour. He riffs on beetles puns with corny chapter headings such as Cricket to Ride and Can't Buy Me Bugs, and sometimes veers off literary, linguistic or musical directions. He reveals insect trivia. Congrats to the tiny lesser water boatman whose sing penis can generate 90 decibels. I'll put the rest of this story on the, uh, or link to the rest of the story in the show notes. We've got a couple of stories from New Zealand this week. So the first one is why are Joseph Parker and Jerome Kino eating bugs for lunch? Um, and this is in the New Zealand Herald. What did you have for lunch today? We can guarantee it wasn't the same as these two Kiwi pro athletes. Last week, All Black Jerome Kano and professional boxer Joseph Parker were involved with some online banter about eating insects after watching TVNZ's new reality show Survivor. Kano started the cheeky chat with, You've been hitting the tarantulas pre-fight, Joseph Parker. The pair joked back and forth about munching on tarantulas, centipedes, crickets and scorpions before Jerome declared, Game on, brother. It looks like curiosity got the better of them and they actually went through the insect eating challenge for lunch today. There's a couple of pictures of uh, their their lunches. Looks like sort of scorpions, water beetles. Another post by TVNZ shows Joseph beating Jerome by eating the fa- insects the fastest. And I'll put sort of links to the uh, to the video of them eating the the insects and the rest of it's, and the rest of this story. Next up, so second story from New Zealand. Um, this is from a radio show, so I'll just play the the audio. 
You see, when I say double chocolate and macadamia cookie, you think, mmm, that sounds nice. Then when I tell you it's made out of insects, you think, ah, <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure. But Nikki Wicks is here this morning. Morning, Nikki. Good morning. <laughs> you are you are going to convince us. So, yes. I'm, well, I've thrown you a curveball this morning, haven't I? Yeah. Look at that, a lovely big biscuit filled with insects. Yeah, this is something a bit different. We we interviewed a guy last week who's been researching insects and using insects as a food source. And uh, he and his team uh, have been going all around the world looking at various different insects. And I would have thought of all the insects that people are already eating, crickets is probably are probably top of the list. Yeah, because I, because I listened to that interview and I was fascinated. And he certainly had a much wider repertoire than I had. I've eaten ants, uh, which are really mm. beautiful if you get a certain variety of them. And I had them in a dish, sprinkled over a dish. It was a dessert, actually, Jack. And they had this wonderful kind of citrusy flavour. And they were amazing. I just absolutely loved them. It was like having a little sprinkling of sort of raspberry powder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I've eaten, I've eaten crickets probably 30 years ago now in Thailand, big fried woks of them. So they've certainly been around yeah. for a long time. And I think we mentioned last week that um, – also in Mexico, they're very popular, and you dip them in a little bit of lime salt and a little bit of chili, and mm. again, a lovely little snack. So yeah, we are we are a bit new to this, but it's a it's a very high protein food source. So I guess like we snack on peanuts now. Peanuts are really high in protein, and that's really good for us. And so uh, we are thinking along the lines of farmed insects. Yeah. Next, who ever would have known? Yeah. Hey? Okay, so do you just want to yeah. first of all tell us where we can get some cricket flour and then run us through this recipe? Yes, okay. <laughs> so go out into the garden. No, uh, that is not the way to do it. <laughs> Crickets have a bit of a season and it's best to go for some that have been uh, professionally produced, I would say. Yes. Look, I got mine from a wonderful company who's getting them through Canada where farming of, of crickets is, is big and they do it organically up there. They roast them, grind them into flour and uh, and that's the way I've, I've used them. And it's a company called livelonger.co.nz and if you go on that website, Live Longer, you'll be able to have a look and see these stockers. So look, I got a couple of packets of the flour. The flour looks like sand. Uh, it's sort of a dark brown colour and it has got quite a sandy sort of a texture so I was thinking, well, how could I incorporate this and what would work well? And I thought, well, a lovely big, you know, those gorgeous big chewy cookies that we love. Yeah. How about I throw some in there? Nice. So that's what I've done. So I've got a really easy recipe and it works a treat. You don't quite get the chewiness of a cookie. It's a little bit more crispy, but they're beautiful. Um, and I'll tell you what I think the key is. Uh, is that I was only able to eat one cookie oh. and then I was really satisfying okay. full. Okay. So that's the protein, Jack. I mean, you know, we often talk about empty calories or nutritionally zero food. And, you know, to be honest, cakes and biscuits and all of that, I love them, but they're just a treat. But, you know, if I'd made a regular batch of these, I probably would have ploughed through three or four of them and then only thought I should stop because, well, you know, that's yeah. greedy. But yeah. I really was struggling to finish one of the cookies because they've got so much more protein in them because of the cricket flour. Oh, okay. That's the key yeah. with it, I think. Great. Yeah, protein's great for us. It's got, you know, it's it's nutritionally good for us. It's great for your metabolism. It's good for stabilizing blood sugar. It's the thing that actually kickstarts your uh, your metabolism. So, if you're trying to lose weight, not that I ever try and lose weight, but if you are, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you do need protein. And I'm not a bodybuilder either. That may also surprise our listeners this morning. <laughs> um, but you know. I'm not trying to bulk up with yeah. protein, but people eat a lot of protein powders these days, and that's because it fills you up, it burns fat, and it builds muscle. Well, that's all sort of good things unless you take it to some sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger type extreme. No. But I just, yeah, so the, I, I think, you know, substitute a little bit of cricket flour in with your regular flour um, and whatever baking you're making in particular, and you'll find it a very satisfying experience. Right. Nutty taste, yeah. you know. No, so look, I've, good. I've loaded up the recipe. I don't know if we've got time to go through it. I don't even know if we need to. It's a really um, basic I, Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're getting a bit tight on time, but we will chuck it up on uh, yeah. on our website. And I know, I mean, it's, it's up on your Facebook page too. And it is really simple. I think even I can yeah. do this one. 
I think even you can. The trick with these cookies is after six minutes, you, you know, they, you start baking them off for six minutes, and then you bring them out of the oven, and you need to bang the tray because I like a big, flat, sort of chewy, slightly wrinkly cookie on the top. I don't want them to puff up because that's more of a biscuit to me. Yeah. So to get that beautiful sort of chewy texture and that sort of all that kind of thin crispiness, um, a little bit of a combo, bring them out of the oven, bang the tray, really bang it a few times so you can sort of see them collapse, if you like, and then throw it back in to, to finish off cooking. But I really encourage, you know, listeners to give it a go. And, Jack, I've got an extra bag of cricket flour, so I'm going to deliver mm. that to you. Oh, uh-huh. okay. <laughs> I'll look forward to that. Oh. Thank you. Hey, Usually you sound so much more <laughs> No, no, no. Anything that involves chocolate macadamia nuts, I think I'll try. Thank you very much, Nikki. You have yourself a good weekend. The story comes from the UK. Uh, it's from the Metro, and it's by Alice Scholl. And I love the taste instantly. This woman adds insects to her meals and thinks you should too. Just as I was finishing a meal up the other day, I found a maggot in it, and that image is still firmly etched in my mind. But one woman from Sofia, Bulgaria, says we shouldn't be disgusted by the prospects of, e- of bugs in our food at all. Actually, we should, be actively in- we should actively incorporate them into our diets. 28-year-old Kremena Despinova has been experimenting cooking with insects for a year and a half now after, discovering they were good, after they were discovering a good source of protein. I was looking for the best protein source out there that is free from any artificial ingredients such as hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, and is at the same time a complete protein that contains all amino acids, she said. Last autumn I was browsing recipes on the internet and I found this US-based company that makes protein bars with cricket flour. After that I placed my first order for dried crickets which comprise of crickets, grasshoppers and buffalo worms. I can clearly remember the moment I was holding a cricket between my fingers and I was about to put it in my mouth. And I can remember this rush of curiosity and excitement in my chest right before experiencing the texture and taste. It was incredible. Honestly, I loved it instantly. And now she fills her stomach with a variety of bug-infused recipes, including cricket flour pancakes topped with syrup and buffalo worms, cricket and guacamole-filled tacos, silkworms, an avocado salad and chocolate mousse with chocolate-covered grasshoppers. It's a little video of uh, the the Metro team trying crickets, and I'll put a link to that in the show. Next up are a number of news stories from the US, so I'll just go ahead and play those, and we'll come back and we'll finish this off. Have you ever thought about eating a cricket? I have, actually. You have eaten a cricket? I've thought about it. I've thought it, to be clear. How about holding a hissing cockroach? Probably not. But this weekend, kids will get a chance to do just that at the Shield Museum of Natural History. It's all part of Bugs Day. NBC Charlotte's Hannah Walker. Brave enough to check out the creatures for us. Hannah. Ah! What is yeah, that? Yeah, I'm brave enough to check out this one. This is one of the hissing cockroaches. It's actually from Madagascar. Keely is the educator here. I'm talking very quietly. This is quiet as you'll ever hear me. Keely, this is something you wouldn't see normally here in the U.S., but it's on display at Bugs Day. Correct. Uh, as you said, these guys are from Madagascar, but we're going to have a bunch of different live insects here that uh, kids will get a chance to touch and interact with and learn about. Including this tarantula also in the case, which kids are not allowed to touch because it could be venomous but what is it about him that you think is so fascinating or her oh i just think things that creep people out are fun (laughs) oh you're so cute keely she's so nice what a nice girl what a nice girl this weekend there i'm gonna be able to check it out there's gonna be a bug chef there as well is that right correct she's actually a local baker who will be uh, cooking a variety of items like shield bug stir fry which is actually stink bugs and things like that so if you'd like to try out eating an insect uh, this is a great chance to do so. You said you can reveal a couple that bug eating contest, which is at two. And that's for participants 18 years and older. Uh, we'll actually have things like mole crickets and uh, big giant uh, water bugs and things like that that they're going to have to eat and compete to win a grand prize. Disgusting. I'm going to do a little bit of my own. Can you take this from me? I'm going to do my own little bug eating contest this morning. These are mealworms, Keely. Correct. And you said these taste uh, like, like potato sticks. Yeah, yes. Okay. You want me to do one with yeah. you? Can you okay. make one with yes. me? 
Hey guys, I'm going to toss it back to you in the studio. This weekend, uh, only $3 plus admission for parents, kids to come out and enjoy Bugs Day. It's experiencing bugs and educating and eating as well. Back to you. Okay. How does it taste? So, how is it? It does taste like a french fry. Yeah, it's not bad. No, it honestly tastes like one of those potato chips. No, thought it'd be chicken. Yeah. Is it crunchy? Yeah, it's crunchy. That's the smell. I feel like I should go brush my teeth now. Yeah, the little shell Disgusting. All right. All right, Hannah, thanks. Staying in the U.S., this time we're in Denver, and this comes from the Denver Post. In Denver, a storage container houses the Rocky Mountain Micro Ranch, one of the only cricket farms in the country, by Joe Vassarelli. Most passerbys wouldn't give much thought to the 40-foot-long storage container sitting on land along Morrison Road in Denver's Westwood neighborhood, but it holds something unique, not just to the city or to the state, but across the country. The container is home to the Rocky Mountain Micro Ranch, a farm where crickets, mealworms and other insects are raised for sale to restaurants, businesses and whoever is up for giving them a try. It's a pretty rare thing everywhere, even in places where people eat bugs regularly. Most of that is wild caught, says Wendy Lou McGill, founder and CEO of Rocky Mountain Micro Ranch, which she started in 2015. McGill first tried eating insects while travelling around Latin America and Africa, where eating insects is more common. In North America and Europe, the practice is rare, and there are maybe 15 farms raising insects for human consumption. McGill's is the only one in Colorado. The ranch operates entirely within the storage container, which is not open to the public, and McGill stores crickets that are ready for sale at a commercial kitchen. Late last year, McGill brought on Carl Conrad as operations manager and bug overlord. Conrad is responsible for raising the crickets and other insects, seeing them through the larvae stage to adulthood over the course of six to eight weeks. At that point, they're ready to market. Conrad is an entomologist who first ate and developed a taste for insects while in the Peace Corps. He was volunteering at the History Colorado Museum when he saw McGill's ad for a bug wrangler. To find a job where you can raise bugs instead of killing them is so rare, Conrad said. Even though the insects he works with ultimately are eaten, he and McGill take care to ensure they reproduce first to replenish the stock. I'll put uh, the rest of the story, I'll put a link to the rest of the story in the in the show notes. This comes from Gephardt Daily, and it's entitled Houston Museum Adds to Gross Income with Insect Vending Machine. The Houston Museum is raking in quite a lot of money with an admittedly unusual vending machine that dispenses only snacks made from insects. The Houston Museum of Natural Sciences Brown Hall of Entomology features a vending machine that's equal parts interactive exhibit and snack station. The museum, the museum, the machine located in the hall's Crockwell Butterfly Center offers six-legged treats, including chips made from ground cricket flour and lollipops made from bugs and case and candy. There's a video that sort of goes along with that. So what I'll do is I'll I'll play the video and we'll come back with it with another story after that. Most people uh, think it's pretty gross. Um, A lot of people can't believe that anybody would um, purposely eat insects. Um, But once they kind of start looking, and then of course it's really popular with children, they start kind of daring their friends to do it. um, They, you know, find it pretty interesting. And a lot of, a lot of people try it out. This vending vending machine actually makes quite a bit of money. Um, Down here we have um, what we call, what are called larvets and crickets. So crickets are actually straight up crickets that are roasted and they have flavoring on them. And then the larvets are actually mealworms or the larvae of beetles. Um, And so little wormy looking things and they're also roasted and and, um, flavored. Um, And then as you move move your way up, you have hard candy with things like the mealworms, ants, um, crickets, sometimes even scorpions inside of them. And then most of the stuff up here is stuff made out of cricket flour, which is actually kind of a new, a new trend. Um, it's actually very healthy for you. It has a lot of protein. And so what they do is they cook the crickets, they grind them up into a fine powder, sort of like flour. It's called cricket flour. And they use it to make, um, they make these corn chips, which are actually really yummy. And then you're not actually eating a whole bug. You're just eating a chip and you can't taste, you know, it doesn't 
taste any different from a traditional chip. And then they also make these protein bars um, and things. We have oatmeal um, and different things made out of cricket flour. And of course, the chocolate covered bugs are usually pretty popular because kids love chocolate. Moving back down to Houston for our next story. This is about Chef Hugo Ortega and his restaurant Zochi, who is serving uh, insects on their, their on their menu. <laughs> Think of this. You definitely don't have nothing to do with tacos. Chef Hugo Ortega's new restaurant, Zochi, specializes in the cuisine of the Mexican state of Oaxaca. Masa dumplings, moles, and tlayudas, a savory tortilla baked in the oven. To really get the regional specialties from his home, that's wonderful. Ortega just won the James Beard Award, the highest honor in the food world, and now he's shining a spotlight on the dishes of his childhood. I try to explain to them and I try to convert them to like the Oaxaca food. <laughs> but this high-end restaurant is also cooking with some ingredients that might make you squirm. This is the, the gusano de maguey. Those are worms, and they're served with queso as an appetizer, along with chapulines or grasshoppers. Sort of like bacon. Like bacon? Yeah. I hope it's like bacon. <laughs> yeah, well, it tastes like that. We'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. it's crispy. Another Oaxacan delicacy, mole de chiquitana. Pants that are ground up into a sauce and served on steak. It's something I've never had before, but certainly willing to try it if you get recommends it. Ortega believes that Houston and our diverse population is more ready than ever to embrace new flavors. And this is my tribute to the great Oaxacan cuisine that we can be eating and enjoy it, you know, by all of us. I'll put a link to the video uh, that accompanies this so you can see the uh, restaurant and some of the dishes that the, that uh, Hugo's putting together. That's it for this week's show. Thanks for listening and don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. See you again next week. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Ento Podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit theentopodcast.co.uk and on Facebook and Twitter at The Ento Podcast. We'll catch you next time.